All right, good morning, everyone. Um, we're going to get started um, with some introductions and stuff like that as people trickle in. Um, but uh, we have quite a few slides, as you'll see, uh, to cover. So um, anyway, good morning. Um, Ting and I are here to talk about orchestrating an OpenStack uh, DevOps cloud to achieve continuous delivery, uh, something that we both worked on in a collaboration uh, a few months ago. And uh, we'll get into it. So uh, I'll introduce myself first, and I'll hand it off to Ting, and then I'll come back later. So I am uh, Thanay Nagji, Solutions Engineer at Electric Cloud, which is a software delivery system, um, acceleration automation company. I'll introduce a little bit more later. And a former engineer on the Electric Commander project, which we'll be talking about today. All right, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Tin Zhao. Uh, currently, I'm working as the director of the R&D Cloud Data Center at Huawei USA branch. Uh, where I am responsible for bringing the latest R&D engineering methodologies and the best practice such as cloud computing infrastructure and, and DevOps environments back to the company to continue improving our engineering efficiency. Before Huawei, I, uh, I was a principal solution architect at a company called VCE to deliver the vBlock 300 converged infrastructure product. And I also work, uh, worked as a senior product manager and a solution architect at different company networking vendors such as Cisco and Juniper, responsible for the uh, data center switch product families and enterprise solution architect architecture design. Before we get started, I would like to give you guys some background about the company Huawei and the challenges we try to solve together with our partner, Electric Cloud. Overall, Huawei is a privately owned, multi-billion international technology company with the headquarters based in Shenzhen, China. Huawei has been an innovative industry lead uh, for the last decade in the telco and IT domain. Huawei has very broad product and solution portfolios, and its, cus its customer covers all the corners of the world. Internally in Huawei, we have three major business groups service provider business group, enterprise business group, and a consumer business group. Their product covers, serv covers the service, pro service provider routers, LTE wireless stations, data center switches, servers, storage arrays, IP telephony, and even the consumer products such as media pad and smartphone. Um, uh, even in very weak, in the past few years, we all know the global economy is very weak, but Huawei still has successfully maintained a very rapid revenue growth year over year. In 2012, we achieved around 35.4 billion US dollars in the revenue, and we are expecting around 10% year over year growth in 2013. Uh, Huawei is really a global company. More than 65% of its revenue come from the region outside of China including EMEA, APEC, North and South America. Huawei has been very committed to its R&D innovative investment since its early founding stage. Uh, globally, we have around 150,000 employees and 16 R&D centers. Around 50% of our total employees, which is 70,000 people, are R&D engineers. In 2012, we spend around 13% of our revenue back to the R&D innovative investment, which is around 5 billion US dollars. That's a lot of money, and we would like to spend them wisely. In other words, the cost of R&D investment is so big, a small percentage of the saving in the R&D cost, or a little bit improvement in the engineering efficiency can help bring the hundreds of millions of dollars back to the company's stake. So let's talk some challenges we are facing uh, these days in Huawei. As we discussed, uh, Huawei offers hundreds of product families every year, and the internal R&D environment is so complicated. A lot of time in, during the peak business hour, the development, the development tools requires hundreds of CPU computing power to complete certain R&D activities or to accelerate certain R&D activities. Instead of provision uh, more local physical build server. For example, we would like to uh, reduce the software build time from hours to minutes. So instead of uh, create uh, more physical build servers in the lab, 
uh, certain technologies we used in this acceleration solution requires a huge amount of distributed uh, computer CP, uh, C, CPU computing power on demand whenever they are needed. Most of us come, come from the engineering background. In a traditional way, we all know uh, how time consuming or tedious to set up the compile or build environment for the uh, development team or to set up the software testing environment for the QA team. In average, let's assume 10% of the engineering forces for a company will get involved in those uh, environment setup every day. If we can help them to reduce 30 minutes in those provision process to a large company like Huawei with 70,000 IND engineers, in total, we actually we can save the cost of 450 engineers for the company per year. That's a huge return in the OPEX to any large company. Uh, in these days, data produced by the IND activities are growing ra very rapidly. And unfortunately, they turn out to be more and more valuable to be stored somewhere so that we can use them to analysis the pattern of the IND process or to trace back the product issues, so on and so forth. So the IND environment required that we should be able to expand our IND storage capacity dynamically scale out without impacting the existing running application or existing environment. In order to achieve more efficiency in the engineering uh, productivity, the integration of roles between the development and operation engineering become a hot topic these days. Um, the progress in the virtualization technology and the computing, uh, cloud computing converged infrastructure in these uh, recent years, along with the automatic provision and the configuration management for devices, make it ready for the IND organization to provide multi-tier multi and multi-platform infrastructure in an easy way. DevOps gives the engineering more control over their development environment and even the production environment. It bridges the gap between the development and uh, operation activities and also helps to automate as much as possible to avoid those unnecessary human errors. The dynamic infrastructure especially helps those giant companies like Huawei to support globally distributed IND teams. So obviously, virtualization and the cloud are the solution, way to go solution here for us. But keep in mind, uh, the internal IND data center or internal uh, IND environment is always a cost center for most companies. We spend money without bringing the revenue directly. So let's take the commercial software as an example. In order to build an IND data center with 3,002 CPUs, servers, right, most likely the company need to spend millions of dollars every year depending on what, depending on what type of license or support contract they choose. But in the meanwhile, the open source community especially the cloud technology, become more and more active in the past two years. The graph shows the population of the open source cloud uh, software community grows dramatically in the past few years. Among the top four open source cloud software, OpenStack definitely gained the most and the best attention from the individual developers, users, and even some big cloud vendors. Uh, the development and the maturity of the Open, open stack is evolving day by day, and that's why we are here this week. Um, so in the project, for the project we, my team did with ele our partner, Electric Cloud, uh, we chose open stack as our underlying cloud, cloud infrastructure. And the, the rack mount server Huawei IH2285 are used and our, our OpenStack is deployed and managed by Huawei ILCN, which is uh, it's called Huawei ILCN, Intelligent Lab Configuration Manager, which is an in-house lab configuration, configuration tool framework. The Huawei ILCN deployed the OpenStack and managed the OpenStack, use a modulated script, and it also leveraged the OpenStack uh, 
community existing best practice deployment by integrating those open source tools such as Chef, Puppet, Cobbler in the back end. We will consider to uh, contribute back to the community when the solution gets mature. In our system, we also created a, a portal for the cloud, cloud admin and the cloud users with different level of privileges to log in and manage the cloud resource. With several clicks, the virtual machine pre-installed with different tools or application can be provisioned very quickly and easily. So up to this point, literally we achieved a low-cost cloud infrastructure for our IND data centers. But can we go further down to reduce the cost by leveraging the open source as much as possible? Uh, looking into those open source tools in each IND process area, the answer definitely is yes. And that's, exa that's, that's the exact idea on top of which we built this dynamic lean DevOps system solution here. So in the project we did with Electric Cloud, uh, as we discussed, uh, we called FUDOS, Huawei Unified DevOps System. And we chose OpenStack as our cloud infrastructure, uh, provisioned and managed by Huawei ILCN. On top of the cloud, the user also has the option to create a couple of virtual machines provisioned with the open source tools along with the cloud provision process initially. For example, we use the Open LDAP for the user identity management, uh, Redmine for the bug tracking tools, and the track for the project management. Review board to help with the code review. And Jenkins to provide the local build, compile, as well as the continuous integration. We use Git or Subversion to provide a source code management. And Graphite for the resource monitoring. Also, the uh, working station virtual machine pre-installed with the open, customized open source Eclipse can be created dynamically to provide the ID platform to the engineering group. At last, but not the least, we chose Electric Commander, which is a perfect framework here, to integrate all those tools together, including the OpenStack cloud, to provide us an intelligent, lean, low-cost DevOps system empowered by the latest cloud technology. To the individual users, such as development engineer or testing engineer or release engineer, we also provide a portal or dashboard as a daily upfront user interface so that the users don't need to jump in between those GUIs for different tools. The portal and dashboard give the most functionalities by backend integrating with those uh, open source tools through Electric Commander. Another big benefit for that is that engineer doesn't need to get, engineer, engineering only need to get trained with this FUDOS portal or dashboard GUI without the need of being aware of those different open source tools or cloud technologies we use in the back end. This dramatically reduces the engineering training cost and improves the efficiency of tool usage. Depending on the user privilege in a specific project, the portal and dashboard can provide the users infrastructure as a service and platform as a service accordingly. Now I'm going to turn this to Tane, let him to go through some more details how we use Commander, Electric Commander, to integrate those tools and the cloud together to provide an end-to-end -end automatic DevOps system. And he will also go through some uh, development uh, IND user case by using our FUDAR system. My mic on? Yeah. Thank you, Ting. So um, I'll jump a little bit with a little bit of an uh, introduction into uh, Electric Cloud. So Electric Cloud is a software company in, located in the Bay Area, or headquartered in the Bay Area, I should say. And uh, we have a software delivery system. Um, our products, Electric Accelerator and Electric Commander, enable you to automate and accelerate your entire software delivery process from build, test, deploy, all the way through to release, and really something that helps you achieve continuous delivery. Um, Electric Commander is the product that we used at Huawei for the Hudas system. 
And uh, that is the framework with which you can automate, parallelize, resource manage, schedule manage, um, and pretty much run whatever you want to run, wherever you want to run, whenever you want to run it um, using Electric Commander workflows, which you see in the background, which we'll see a little bit more of. So the OpenStack integration, um, it was not something that we previously had before we started working with Huawei, but it was something that we created on site um, very, very quickly. It's something that we're formalizing as we speak right now, but uh, for those of you who are familiar with OpenStack and uh, the REST API or the Nova tool, um, it'll be pretty familiar to you. So you can see over here, this is a project. This, uh, what we're looking at over here is Electric Commander. Um, the project uh, contains a few procedures to deploy one VM, deploy multiple VMs, undeploy one, undeploy multiple, and uh, update some uh, local information. So this is a deploy procedure. The details aren't too important, but just kind of to show you guys what the integration looks like. Um, and it uses uh, the uh, Electric Commander Perl API to talk um, to, talk to uh, the OpenStack REST API, as well as uh, parses some output from Nova. Um, this, is, uh, this is a second procedure built on top of the original deploy procedure, which uses dynamic job step creation in Electric Commander to uh, basically run and create as many VMs as you want to um, dynamically. So I'll walk through a solution with a couple of scenarios for what we achieved using the Hudos system. And um, after that, I'll turn it back over to Ting to go into some summary, and then you guys can ask some questions if you like. So this is a development scenario. We have a developer, Joe, on one side, a reviewer, Mike, on one side, and the Hudos system in the center. So the developer, Joe, modifies their code using Eclipse and launches a pre-flight build. How many of you guys in the audience are familiar with the concept of pre-flight or pre-commit builds? Not too many? OK, well, the concept is with Electric Commander, what you can do is you launch a pre-flight build. It takes your local source changes, uploads them to the server, downloads them onto the client, uh, onto the agent um, on top of a clean source snapshot. So you're effectively simulating your check-in. And then it runs a whatever procedure, whatever job you would normally run in production, it runs that against that simulated check-in and only automatically checks in the code at the end if that pre-flight was successful. So what we'll see over here is once the user modifies the code and launches Eclipse, if you see that little cloud lightning icon, that's where it passes over to Electric Commander, which is then going to orchestrate all of the different um, tools that Ting spoke about earlier. So the first thing we do is check out the sources and overlay the deltas from the developer's box to simulate their check-in. Then in Redmine, which is the issue tracking system we use in this, in this uh, case, you mark the issue as build and unit test. So that way you can track from your issue tracking system what each issue's status is. So we added some statuses that, are, that reflect what happens when, you're, when, when, a, when an issue is being passed through the, through the Hudas system. Excuse me. Um, after that, Commander will then launch a build and test on Jenkins, passing it instead of the normal subversion repository, um, the uh, pre-flight source directory that it created. Um, after that, if the build or test was successful, um, the Commander job will do one of two things. In the case where the build failed on Jenkins, it immediately reports it to the developer, and the developer's check-in is not allowed, and they're then told to Go take a look at the build, see what failed, try again after you make a fix. So in the case where the build test succeeds, it then moves on to Redmine, marks the issue as in code review. This is using a Redmine integration. Um, and then in Review Board, which is the open source review tool that we used for this case, um, it creates a review request, which then goes over to Reviewer Mike. So now Review Mike has a chance to review the modified code. Electric Commander will wait until that review is processed. And whether it was successful or not, it's again going to notify the developer. So in the case where the reviewer rejected the code, once again, in Eclipse, the developer receives a notification that the code review is rejected. They can go and take a look at that. Um, and, uh, and their commit is not allowed. In the case where the review is successful, Commander will automatically mark the issue as resolved using the Redmine integration and then notify the developer automatically committing their code in Eclipse. So this window that you see over here on the left-hand side, from the time the developer modified their code and launched their pre-flight to the time the code was checked in, 
that's a huge time savings. You don't have to worry about what happened with the auto build test. You don't have to worry about breaking production builds. You don't have to worry about closing out your issue or about um, even the code review happening. It all kind of happens in a black box, so to speak, for the developer and they can move on to other tasks. So I'll walk through some screenshots, kind of, just to go through the same thing that we just spoke about. It'll be pretty quick. Um, I, won't, uh, I won't spend too much time, but uh, this is Redmine, if you guys are familiar with it. Uh, this is the bug that was marked in progress by the developer as they started to, uh, as they started to work on it. In Eclipse, they modify their code and launch a pre-flight using Electric Commander's Eclipse plugin. And over there you can see it's a run configuration. They, they run their build and unit test. In Electric Commander, the subversion pre-flight is created. The subversion pre-flight source um, snapshot is created and then passed over to Jenkins where it launches the pre-flight build using that simulated check-in. It also automatically updates the task in Redmine to a new status which we added, which is build and unit test. In Jenkins, you can see that the build was started by user Electric Commander, which is the user that's blessed by Jenkins to be launched from Electric Commander. So this job was launched from Electric Commander. Um, it's the exact same job that you, or the, the exact same build that you would launch if you wanted to run this in production. So the same build is running under CI as well, monitoring subversion changes. Um, in the case where the Commander build fails, Commander picks that up from Jenkins and it fails the workflow. It never moves on to the review session, uh, to, to code review. It reports the error. And on the Eclipse developer side, it's hard to read that, but it says the automated build and test failed. And the developer's code was not committed. So the developer modifies their code, launches another pre-flight. This time the commander build succeeds and it's sitting there waiting for a review. So in the case where it's waiting for a review, this is review board. This is the automatically submitted review request. And so this is the reviewer on the other end. Um, they choose to reject their changes in this case. Um, commander picks up that the changes are rejected and the workflow fails and it's gonna report that back to the user in Eclipse. The change was reviewed and rejected. Eclipse, re he, he receives the error message, makes whatever changes he wants, relaunches the pre-flight, third time's a charm, except the changes on the reviewer side this time after getting through the build and unit test and the workflow succeeds and at the bottom, the changes have been successfully submitted within Eclipse. I'll walk through another test scenario. This one talks a little bit more about the OpenStack integration over here. So the test engineer, Jill, she picks, a, she picks an issue to verify and which test cases she wants to run against that issue in Electric Commander using a procedure that was set up for that task. Um, once again, we use the Redmine um, integration to mark the issue as verifying. In OpenStack, we provision the virtual machines based on the test cases that she wanted to run. Now, this is completely dynamic and flexible. How you want to deploy machines, when you want to deploy them, is really up to the designer of the procedures within of procedures and workflows within Electric Commander. Um, from Commander, it launches the automated tests on agents that are on those OpenStack machines that were just um, deployed. And whether the test was successful or not will then gate what happens next. In the case where the tests failed, the developer's notified and that the VMs are ready to inspect. So the VMs are not automatically undeployed because typically if a test fails, you might want to, as a test engineer, you want to go and take a look at those VMs and see what happened. So they're notified. They're given some information about how to get to those VMs based on the um, IP addresses that were, the floating IP addresses that were assigned and the, uh, the links to the uh, web VNC via OpenStack. Um, the user then goes in and manually decides when they want to tear down the virtual machines that were deployed. In the case where the test succeeds, Commander automatically tears down the virtual machines. This is again a design decision. Whether or not you want to do that is really up to you. But in this case, we decided in the case where the tests succeed, there's really no point keeping those VMs around. Might as well keep it as elastic and dynamic as possible in that case. Mark the issue as closed in Redmine. Notify the developer, I'm sorry, notify the test engineer that the test passed and closed the issue. So once again, the same type of time savings over here. Um, the, the test engineer does not have to worry about provisioning or tearing down these virtual machines. That's all taken care of through an abstraction layer. And the tests are automatically run through it based on, did, sorry, did you have a question?
So yeah, in this case, so this was definitely more of a kind of a proof of concept. And so it really depends on how you want to do that. So in this case, what we did is we just kind of had a certain few test cases which run on different platforms, which are represented by OpenStack VMs. But that's not the case, really. I mean, depending on what you want to have it as, it could be based on you select test cases, you select test directories, you select a product, and it runs through the whole test suite. So it really depends on, on the designer. So this is the time savings uh, for the test engineer. Once again, doesn't have to worry about any of the stuff that's automatically taken care of by the Huda system. So I'll go through some screenshots again. You can see over here, there are no dynamically deployed VMs. These two are the actual ser uh, machines on which uh, the commander servers are running. Um, so this is the test workflow. Again, this is just an example. It's not something that is hard and set. These parameters and what the behavior of the workflow and procedures and commander is completely customizable. But in this case, the test engineer selects a Redmine issue, selects which test cases they want to run on which platforms, automatically provisions the machines from commander. So the VMs are dynamically deployed using that OpenStack integration, which I showed you guys earlier. Um, you can see that they're spawning. Once the IP addresses are assigned, um, those IP addresses are automatically picked up, once again, using the OpenStack integration. There are links to the deployed machines, and these are the uh, web VNC links, which are also available through um, the API. Um, and in the case where the test failed, it sits there in the error state waiting for the test engineer to come back and decide to tear down those machines. It sends an email out to the test engineer with these same links, and once they've taken a look using those web VNC links, you can log in directly to the machines, which is really cool. Um, and uh, Commander sits there waiting for the manual transition. Once the user decides to take down those machines, they run the tr transition, you click OK, the machines are automatically torn down. In OpenStack, we're back to our same two statically deployed VMs. Now, in the case where you relaunch the test workflow, this time, same issue, same case. Um, uh, same test cases, something was fixed along the way. Um, if the tests were successful, the VMs were never, sorry. If the tests were successful, the VMs were dynamically deployed and undeployed. The test engineer never really had to run anything in that case, or never had to interact with OpenStack at all in that case. So I'll hand it back over to Ting for a summary, and then we'll have some time for uh, questions. Thank you, Ting. Hello. Um, In Huawei, actually, we have very aggressive goals to improve the engineering efficiency with very detailed uh, target metrics. For example, in the coming years, we would like to reduce our software build time from hours to minutes with those tens of millions of LAM code embedded software. And we also would like to, for example, reduce the full automat automatic regression testing cycle from execution time from days to hours, and those complicated solution testing cycle from months to weeks. Uh, none of them are easy tasks for any R&D organization. But we do believe uh, the next generation R&D data center empowered by Hudas solution can help us to get closer or achieve those aggressive goals. Uh, thanks the team from Electric Cloud and the team from Huawei. Uh, in the project we did jointly, uh, we designed, built, and validate a live and working system to help us to increase the resource utilization and the productivity to reduce the cost to deliver software and hardware, and also shorten the product time to market with better qualities. Uh, in the meanwhile, our China team has also started the work to deploy and roll out the uh, IND data centers across different cities in China by leveraging the Hudas solution we did jointly in Huawei US, US, US branch. And we definitely look forward to share with you guys more exciting story next year with those large real world, large scale real world uh, deployment uh, story. So this concludes our uh, presentation today. I think we still have some time. Any questions, comments? Uh, tonight, I know I, I will be. Yeah.
That's the electric so, command yeah. that we use. So yeah, the, the tool that we were using is the tool basically, so the, sorry, the question was what, are we, what kind of tool are we using to orchestrate um, the whole Huda system basically? Um, so the answer is Electric Commander is the tool that we use. That's Electric Cloud Software, and that's the reason I was working with Ting as part of the partnership. Um, so yeah, so Electric Commander, as you saw, you saw some workflows and maybe some resource um, type, of, some dynamic resource integrations and the integrations that it has with other tools like OpenStack. Um, but uh, the software is really an enterprise class um, build, test, deploy, automation, and um, orchestration tool. So, yeah, so the question. Generally, it takes some time to establish a new tool with all the development systems. That's so, since you have mentioned Eclipse, let's say Eclipse Python I'm going to use for my development system. And let's say I have five users who are developers. Sure. So, to do this kind of thing, what kind of, is it one server, 10 server, 15 server? What, how do you uh, estimate and how fast you can do this? That's, that's, that's the first part we mentioned. Actually, we use Huawei's in-house in tool, Huawei ILCN, to provision the whole system. It's like one hour, two hours. If you just have a couple of servers, two hours, you can have a fully functional open stack along with the integrated tool, any tool environment. Depending on what type of the, like programming language you choose, you want a Python developing environment, you can choose the, that environment during the provision process. We actually, the next step, we would like to move on to the path level, platform as a service, depending on what type of program language or program environment the developer needs. We can easily provision or provide those type of environment with our tool. Uh, <coughs> your software is uh, agentless, right? I'm here. Okay. Uh, you, you're, you're asking yeah, the, the software is agentless, so how do you, how do you provision the stack on the on the machine, how do you configure that? So Electric Commander does have an agent. Um, okay. You don't have to actually install an agent, you can run it through an SSH proxy, but it's not agentless. Okay, and so uh, your agent uh, coordinates the installation on the, on the virtual machines? In that case? Um, yeah, so whichever agent has access to, whichever machine or host has access to OpenStack, that's the agent that you use to provision and undeploy machines. Oh, I mean to provision the the software that you want to test on on top of the machines. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you use the so you use the commander agent or you use an SSH SSH proxy to actually run commands on that machine on the machines that are dynamically deployed over OpenStack, and so that's how you would you, you would use that agent to to deploy your software. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is anyone using this for financial control? In other words, you seem to have a very good feel for what everyone's doing. Is there any kind of reporting, you know, you, so you can understand what all the developers are doing and if they're actually working on your projects, things like that? Uh, there will be some extended development on those open source tools. For example, you, we use track for the project management, right? Uh, we need some resource to do extended uh, development on those project management uh, software. But in Huawei, we also have some legacy project management software, so we need to see which one we are gonna choose. But that's definitely one of the options. Yeah, okay. and also right now Huawei is developing in, in partnership with Electric Cloud is you know the dashboard that Ting spoke of that's very much under development. So there is a administrative view where you can see all the different products and where in the life cycle they are, um, where in the kind of continuous delivery pipeline each product is, each version of each, of each product. Developers that are associated with each product can take a look and see where they are. Yeah. And so, yeah. Actually, Tana is going to, for the next two weeks, he will be in Shenzhen working, working with us to do some extra further work, yeah. So I want to ask about, and I guess this addresses both of you. Sure. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I have a software shop and it's either folks all over, uh, uh, in the US, all over the country, um, and we need to integrate them all and we're using a variety of tools. You know, we have Jira, we have, uh, you know, Jenkins, um, Garrett. That's the same idea, sort pretty of a much, smorgasbord. Yeah. Developers go range, you know, from Eclipse to VI. Uh, and how do, how do how, A, can this, you know, I'm assuming, can address the issues we have of, of lack of connectivity 
uh, and does it involve, is it like, a, a pr like I'm assuming I, I, this isn't a downloaded product, it would involve, some, you'd have to help with integrating it with all this, or, or do I just click next? Oh, no, yeah. So, I mean, if the integration <laughs> doesn't exist, it's something Electric Cloud would work with. Okay. What would work with you for. Um, that's what we do for our customers. Um, but uh, to your point, um, from Eclipse to VI, we showed Eclipse as an, as an example, but obviously the world doesn't use Eclipse. So, um, or everyone in the world doesn't use Eclipse, I should say. Uh, so, uh, you have command line utilities available that do exactly the same thing that you saw. Um, so, really, that's kind of a wrapper around the command line utility. Um, so the ID integrations that we have are Visual Studio and Eclipse, but for the most part, developers who use VI, who use Emacs, um, they're, they tend to use the, uh, the command line utility. Communicate back and forth. Um, but So the communication mechanism, basically, so the, the client preflight submits a request over HTTP okay. and uploads the, uh, the changes over, I believe, Stomp. I'm not sure of the exact protocol. Um, but, uh, and then, it, and, and then it, the commander server basically will notify that client on the other end once the job completes. And that's how you, that's how you receive the feedback. No, it's not an agent, actually. It's just a client. So it's just a tool that you run on your right. machine that communicates with the commander server and then waits for the job to complete. Mm -hmm. yeah. just, just a couple questions about your OpenStack install. Mm -hmm. uh, how big was it? Like, how many compute nodes and what version of OpenStack were you using? And did you use any deployment tools like Fuel or uh, um, Crowbar? Yeah, actually, probably came, came late. Actually, we used the uh, Huawei in-house tool called uh, Intelligent Lab Configuration Manager, which is a Huawei in-house lab management tool framework. But we, in the back end, actually, we will integrate those Chef, Puppet, Cobbler, right, to, to, to leverage. The, because in the open, OpenStack community, we have so, so many best practice deployment tools. So actually, and in the back end, back end, we use Chef and the Puppet. Depend on which we have the option you get. You get. You get. Oh, attention. I meant deployment of the OpenStack infrastructure. Right. Right. Yeah. And in that proof of concept, actually, in our lab, we have eight servers, mm -hmm. and three servers are the controller nodes to provide high availability. Three, three compute nodes and two story nodes. Yeah. Uh, the ideal is actually I would like to have this system to support our U.S. branch R&D teams, which is around a couple of hundred people environment. This is a little bit looking ahead, but are there plans to maybe offer this as um, sort of like an SQA or test as a service? That's, that's exactly the, the second testing scenario. We have those testing scenarios, okay. right? This kind of a proof of concept in the US branch, but the, the current work we are doing is we transit this work to the headquarter. They have much more complicated environment. They have very large scale testing environment. That's, that's what we are doing. Basically, we integrate those like test management, test case management system, test execution servers into this, this solution. When, wh whatever can dynamic created and the tear down, we will use the OpenStack Elastic uh, advantage to, to provide that. Yeah. Any I think more we questions? have uh, one more minute. Yeah, the, yeah, the. Uh, I have a one question. Sure. Uh, how do you make a new test for new feature in your product in testing phase? Oh, so so one uh, that's that's a great question. Um, you, we do not create the tests, so it's definitely the onus is always on the developer or the test engineer, whoever creates tests, to create the tests. Commander is a framework by which you run the tests, so it's not actually a test creation framework, if that's, if, if that's your question. Right. So usually in typical uh, enterprise environment, right, we have the test management system. Basically, this uh, one server or multi-server to manage all those test cases centralized, right? So as I said, we are going to integrate those systems into our cloud system. 
make it like dynamically created. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, Ty. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.